welcome to part four, guys. Necessary for the build is going to be some black grease, followed up by some Loctite, and your turnbuckle wrench. All three of these are included in the kit. Not included in the kit is the dynamite wrench with all your bits necessary. Not necessary, but cool to have is an electric screwdriver. I like to start everything with these and I go back with my hex wrench and tighten everything up. Extra 564 is good to have handy. A set of needle nose pliers. And last but not least, an X-Acto knife to help you open up your parts bags. So with that, we're going to go ahead and start with bag D in the kit and prepare for the build. One thing I will mention is when you guys get into this, you guys can see the rear comes with a locker. Um, this is pretty much the only option you have for the rear, um, kind of just being a solid axle truck. That's kind of the purpose of how these things work. So I want you guys to know the rear is a lot easier to build because um, you don't have to deal with the dip oils and all that stuff. So, moving along here, we're going to begin the build. And again, no grease is necessary on this stuff since this whole assembly rotates in unison. But I am going to set my O-ring down there along with my um, copper brass washer. Once that's centered, then the actual pressure from the locker will hold that in. One thing I will mention, though, is you could use a little bit of black grease for a quick tip and just put a little dab on each kind of four corners in between the screw holes. And what this is going to do is it's going to hold in your blue seal in place. It's kind of makes a little bit less of a headache so once I do that line up my screw holes that won't essentially fall out during the build. So now I'm going to continue on with my build here o-ring brass copper washer again the kind of pressure is going to kind of hold this whole thing together. I'm going to grab my bit here and I'm going to actually use it to kind of line up my holes like so make sure all four are lined up and then I can go ahead and screw these down. Big thing that I mention in every video, guys, is that I don't tighten the screws with the electric screwdriver. I take the hassle work out of it, get them started, get them close, but then before I tighten everything, I'll go through, insert the wrench, make sure that all those, um, the seals and the washers are lined up, and then I'll go in there with my wrench and tighten them down using a cross pattern, starting at the top, then working my way to the bottom, you can go either right or left, and then move your way across. This will make sure that that ring gear actually sits down flush with the case, and you won't have any issues. So again, guys, kind of important point is to make sure that the um, O-ring and the washers are all lined up. You should be able to see right through the holes, and then you kind of go back with your hex wrench and tighten everything up using a cross pattern um, to make sure that that ring gear sits flush. So once we get this nice and snug, I'll give you guys a little preview of what it looks like all assembled. Everything looks good. We can set that aside and continue with our build. So now we're going to start building the rear center drive shaft. And big tip here, guys, is to, of course, make sure you guys put Loctite on the screw, set screw, the core set screw, and then thread it into the drum before applying any grease. This prevents any grease from getting into the threads and having the Loctite not hold. So again, set screw already has Loctite. I'm going to insert that into the drum, not fully tightened, just started where it's flush. And then I can go ahead and apply my grease to both of the mating parts. Comfortably, again, this is a good abundant amount. We're going to wipe off the excess later. Get a clear, good coat on that on both ends. Once you get this accomplished, you can go ahead and insert the drum into the CV shaft. Kind of paying close attention to make sure that the hole of the drum is facing up through the slot. And then with all this assembly still complete, I like to take the shaft and make sure that it's straight. Then I can take the shaft out, grab the 
rest of the assembly and assemble and now you can tighten down that scut screw knowing that you have straight metal metal contact with your Loctite. Finally is inserting the secondary spring for added security and again you kind of just slide this over you get one end of the spring similar to a key ring and then you kind of use your nail and twist the out drive until it kind of fully seats in between those two recesses so you can kind of see that the spring will prevent that pin from falling out if your set screw falls out. Again, kind of a little bit added measure since this is more of a trail truck. Nothing worse than being, you know, an hour and a half into a trail and having an issue with the set screw. So now we're going to go ahead and make the composite portion of the center rear drive shaft onto our metal out drive. First, I'm going to prepare my screw with Loctite. And the big thing here, guys, is that there's actually a flat spot, only one on the entire part that needs to mate with a flat spot on the composite drive shaft portion. And you want to make sure that both of these go together, and then you can take your screw, and that's going to snug right up. So with that, all that's pre-built, I'm going to get ready with my set screws here on both ends, making sure to use Loctite. And once these are prepped, again, these aren't fully tight and they're just starting to make it easier. I'm going to begin with the pinion assembly. Now, it's important to note that the pinion has two flat spots. That's going to be crucial for when you tighten these with the set screws. So again, I'm going to line up the set screw with that flat spot and give you guys a little bit of a closer look. You guys see there's a flat spot that I'm lining up the set screw with. And I'm putting pressure on the pinion. I'm going to hold the drive shaft in place. Now I can go ahead and tighten down both ends nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the assembly, make sure everything is good. Now I'm going to apply some grease to the pinion gear. A good abundant amount is okay here. Also some grease to the ring gear. And an important thing to note here, guys, is once you insert the bearing is this will only go in one way. There's actually a tooth inside the diff casing that will prevent it from sitting um, in there properly. So if I see this, I point the ring gear towards that teeth that actually won't sit into place, but it will only go in one way like so. Once that's in, I'll rotate the assembly, um, make sure all that grease spreads down there evenly, looks good. Then I can continue on with the build. So that's it guys, that is your rear pumpkin all assembled, everything moves freely in there which is good. And to go ahead and flip the page to the next portion of the manual, I'm going to set the rear pumpkin aside and begin assembling the rear axles. Using my hex wrench, I'm going to tighten everything up. Again, these do go into um, metal inserts molded into the rear pumpkin. Everything seems to move freely. The assembly looks okay to me. So with that being said, we can set that aside and continue with our manual build. So the next portion of the manual is to build the rear links. Now, here are the plastic links, but I'm actually going to substitute these in with Vanquish Products rear trailing arm links. These things are phenomenal, guys. I'm going to give you guys a quick little close-up of the header card. Now, I'll also add um, a link to the page and the arms themselves on the video description, so be sure to check those out. But 
awesome product. I'm going to actually open them up and give you guys a little bit of a closer view here. So they're even kind enough to give you a quick little instruction set. Um, these things are very simple to build, but it's nice that they give you a nice little manual on where to place Loctite and make sure quick tips as well. So I'm going to get that folded up and place that in front of my manual for reference. But look at these guys. I mean, the finish is awesome. It's like a kind of like a matte, great finish, natural finish. And look at that. You actually can see they machined in or in a real truck, you can see the actual TIG weld. Now that I got everything organized here, a great thing about these is that you can use your original um, rod end balls that come with the kit. You simply just insert them like so. They insert the plate that comes included. These are side specific. They only go in one way. You can see I have free movement there. You simply take the screw with a little bit of Loctite Again, I'm using a hex driver, not an electric tool, guys. This is um, aluminum, so it is easier to strip. Not necessarily that the part is um, not good, but aluminum is naturally a softer material than steel, so um, it's a lot easier to cross-thread those. So you want to make sure you use an actual wrench, not an um, electric screwdriver. So now I'm wrapping up the last rod end here guys and the next step is to add the little added security set screws here. Down here at the bottom you can see there's already a free tack hole and again a little bit of Loctite on the uh, set screw. You can just insert that like so and snug it up and that's a little bit of added security. I'm going to go ahead and finish all four of these. And again guys the great thing about this is that again using the original um, rod and ball and I mean it's so tricky to machine a part like this um, the quality is just awesome I'm always blown away by Vanquish products and I mean there's nothing like it in the market and they have such pride in their stuff which I love and it looks phenomenal again they offer these in different colors as well so go ahead and check out the link um, that I added on the video description for any more details and products again I might just continue with the install here again everything make sure everything moves free you guys there's nothing worse than a brand new truck that has some kind of um, issue with a rod end or a shock that's not letting the suspension go through its travel smoothly the way it should, and it makes the truck perform horrendously. So again, give you guys a kind of a finished product. You can see these links. Again, they were super smooth. Everything falls under its own weight. So now with that, I'm going to go ahead and begin assembling the top links per the manual. Again, using my needle nose pliers to pop the balls in. Again, using my electric screwdriver to kind of start the threads, but I always go back with my actual manual wrench and get these snugged up. And once these are all snugged up, guys, we're going to move on to the fun part of the build, which is attaching it to our part one, two, and three. Um, chassis build. So the big thing here is notice the drive shaft does have different size slots, too small, too big. And you want to make sure that these slots are lined up correctly. And this is the first step. In order to get this, you want to insert, again, obviously these are in a sense keyed, and it should go in right in. So now that, that drive shaft is in and there's smooth sliding action there, I can kind of preset my links where they're going to go and begin to secure everything down with the hardware in the kit. Now during the last step, my camera did run out of memory guys, so sorry. Um, but it was uh, nothing too critical there, just following the manual. And here's the finished product again. My suspension travel is nice and free. Um, again, I added the Vanquish product rear um, lower links. Everything looks great there. That's kind of what we just worked on. And here's kind of the finished product using part 
one, two, and three, and now four of our build, guys. Again, thanks for following, guys. I really appreciate it. Please comment if you have any questions. We'll see you guys for part five. Bye.